Now that we understand how omni lights and directional lights work, in this chapter we're going to talk about spotlights. And it's important to understand omni lights and directional lights first because spotlights combine both things that we learned when talking about omni lights and also things that we learned when talking about directional lights. They're kind of a a combination of directional and omni lights. With an omni light, you're you're concerned with the position of the light. And with a directional light, you're concerned concerned with the direction that the light is pointing. Well, with a spotlight, uh, you need both of those components. You need to know which directing the direction the spot is pointing, and also uh, what position the light is in. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about spotlights. And what I want to do is, well, first of all, uh, we're in the uh, chapter seven start shader, and this is basically a copy of the uh, final shader from chapter four. So we're going to use that as our starting position. And um, the first thing that we need to do is let's take a look at our omni light here. You can see that when I move the light around, it's affecting uh, the lighting in the scene. Um, but when I rotate the light, it makes no difference uh, whatsoever what rotation the light is in. So let's bring up our options panel here. Um, and what I'm going to do is convert this light from an omni to a spotlight. Now, just like we saw in the last chapter, uh, you'll remember that we converted our omni light to a directional light. And at first, um, when we rotated the directional light around, it didn't make any difference. So just simply converting the light to a spotlight is not actually going to automatically make our shader work that way. We have to go into the shader and apply some code so that our shader treats this light as a, as a spotlight instead of an omni light. Currently, the shader is programmed to, to use that light as an omni light. So if we come down here and look at our shader code, we're bringing in the light's position. But like I said, for a spotlight, we need both the position and the direction. So what I'm going to do is grab the directional code uh, from our final shader of, of the previous chapter. And I'm just going to paste that in right here. So we're bringing in light one dir, uh, the direction of the light as well as the position. And I'm just going to come up here and get rid of light position because these are both the same light now. OK, so we're bringing in the direction of the light. And now we need to come down to the pixel shader to actually use that information to make our spotlight. Uh, first of all, what I want to do is talk about how this is going to work. So we have. Uh, our light direction that we just brought in. This is the, the direction that the light is facing. And we also, in our vertex shader, we computed a vector that goes from the light source to the surface. So we have two vectors, one that's pointing from the light to the surface of our model, and then one that's pointing in the direction uh, that our light is facing. Now, when we talked about just standard diffuse lighting, we said, if we measure the angle between the surface normal and the light vector, we can see how bright our pixel needs to be. Well, in this case, with a spotlight, we need to do the same thing. We need to measure the angle between the direction that our light is facing and that vector that's pointing from our light to our object. And if the angle between those two vectors is, is really small, we know that our light needs to be lighting that object. But if it's really uh, sharp, like a 90 degree angle, we know that our light is not pointing at that object, and so the object shouldn't be lit. So just like we did with diffuse lighting, the way that we measure that angle is with a dot product. And so I'm going to come in right here after we're creating our light vectors. And I'm going to say float spot cone because we're, we're measuring the, the, uh, the cone of our spotlight here. Uh, you know what, before we do this, I'm just going to back up just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is show you that we can very easily convert our light 
to a directional light just by taking uh, light one dir instead of in dot light vec, and we're going to put it right here. And if I save that, now our light becomes a directional, and I can rotate it around, and rotating the light affects the scene, but moving it does not affect the scene. So we've got both information from the directional light uh, and from the position, and now we just need to combine those. Uh, so anyway, like I was saying, we're going to say float spot cone, and I mentioned that what we needed to do was do a dot product between the uh, light direction vector and the vector from our light source to our object. So I'm going to say float spot cone equals dot, and L is the vector from our light to our object, and light one dir is the vector uh, that's the, the direction that our light is pointing. But I actually need to normalize this one um, because it comes in non-unit length. So I'm going to say normalize light one dir. And there we go. So we have our, our cone angle, or rather our, the, the uh, spot cone value. So I'll save that. And obviously it does nothing because I'm not actually using it yet. So I need to come in here and say, for our final color, we're going to now multiply this by spot cone. So I'll save that. And now what I have in max is a very simple spotlight. You can see if I move the light around, it affects the lighting of the scene, just like an omni light would. And if I rotate the light, it also affects the lighting of the scene, uh, just like a directional light would. So I've combined both an omni light and a directional light to make a spotlight. But what you'll probably notice is that my spotlight is really wide. And I need some way of controlling the, uh, the angle of my cone. I need to be able to focus it really tightly or open it up really uh, broadly if I want to, um, just like a standard spotlight does. And so I need a new value up here in the top of my shader, kind of like a glossiness value uh, that will allow me to control um, the width of my cone. So I'm going to just take my glossiness value and copy that. I'm going to paste it in here, and I'm going to call this my cone angle. And also for the UI name, instead of glossiness, I'm going to call it cone angle. Okay, so you'll remember when we did our, uh, when we did our chapter on specularity, we talked about uh, computing the half angle and then raising it to a power. And with specularity, when you raise a specular highlight to a power, what you do is you narrow that specularity down. And that's exactly what we want to do here with our spotlight. So I'm going to come back down here to our pixel shader. And instead of just calling our spot cone the dot product of our light, direct, our light vector and our light direction, we're going to change that. And we're going to raise that to a power. So I'm going to say pow. And my first component of POW is what's being multiplied, which is our dot product. And then my second, pro uh, my second component of POW is the number of times that I'm multiplying it by itself, what power I'm raising it to. And I'm going to raise it to the power of my cone angle value. So I'll hit save and come back over here. And now you'll notice, aha, my spotlight got a, a lot more narrow. Now, one thing I want you to see is that my color here is yellow, but that yellow or kind of a peachy orange color. That color is not showing up here, and that's because I need to bring up my material panel and assign uh, my light to Omni 01, and my light shows up. And just to make it a little nicer, I'm going to bump this color up to a multiplier of 1.3, so it's a little bit brighter. So now you'll notice that my cone angle has narrowed quite a bit, and my spotlight is really behaving like a spotlight. I can, I can focus it just in one single area. If I bring up my material panel again, 
you'll notice I have this new cone angle value that I added, and I play with that. Uh, the lower it goes, the wider my cone's going to be. If I change cone angle to something like 5, then I'll have a nice uh, lit area on my terrain and my teapot. So there you go. I have a value that I can control uh, the width of my spotlight uh, with this cone angle value here. Now, there is a problem with the way this code is working, and I want to show you what that code is. I'm going to grab my light and rotate it so it's pointing up, and what you'll notice is that it's also uh, going in the opposite direction, so my light is lighting everything that's behind it in addition to everything that's in front of it. So it really should be lighting this area up here, and it is, but it's also lighting uh, this area down here, and we want to prevent that. So I'm going to come back into my code, and what's happening is this dot product uh, gives me the measurement of my angle, but if my angle is greater than 90 degrees, it wraps around. And so um, I, I end up with a value of 1 all the way to negative 1. And what I want to do here is prevent my value from going negative. So I can use the saturate command, just type saturate uh, the result of my dot product. I'll put another close parentheses there. And now hit save. And now if I rotate my light around, I get no lighting on the back side here, only on the front side of the light. So I use saturate to clamp the result of my, of my dot product between 0 and 1 uh, to keep it from lighting the backside of, of the light. So there you have it. That's a really simple way of creating spotlights, kind of combining the directionality of, of a directional light uh, with the position information of an omni light, and also adding in that uh, cone angle term to be able to control uh, where my spotlight is focused or, or the width of the focus of my spotlight. So that's uh, spotlights, and that wraps up this section of the DVD. In the next section of the DVD, we're going to talk about global illumination. And I have a method of global illumination that I hope that you'll find interesting and useful. So stick around for that.